background today is literally my favorite app ever produced by uh, the Star Trek Adventures. We play off it. It's in the Shackleton Expanse book, Jim. So that's my background today. I love this map. My favorite. Yeah, and, and you uh, you interviewed the uh, the person responsible for that too, uh, Lee Woozy, uh, recently, if I recall right. And uh, yeah, he, he dropped that into the layout. And uh, when I saw the the draft, I was like, hey, this is really great. And I yeah. gave him a little a couple little tweaks to it. But he uh, he uh, he put that all together pretty much by himself just by reading the text. Yep, and, and then uh, my my crew. We're currently. I'll show you where we're at. We're up. Oh, I can't. I guess my body won't block. Oh, yeah. So we're currently <laughs> up here, and uh -huh. we're trying to get all the way over here. Oh, awesome! And, and that's the adventure to get us out of the Shackleton expanse and and hopefully reunited with Starfleet after being away for almost three years. Three years. Wow, super cool. We'll see, we'll see how that happens. All right. All right. Well, welcome everyone to Continuing Conversations, where we talk about everything Star Trek Adventures RPG, all the shows, everything Star Trek interrelated with it, and where you no longer have to watch the show, but you know, you're going to watch the show. But in addition, you can actually play the show, be in the show, and experience all the wonderment that is Star Trek. Um, I'm Michael Dismuke. I'm uh, associated with Continuing Missions, which is the number one fan site for Star Trek Adventures. I'm also a free light freelance writer for Star Trek Adventures, and Jim Johnson. Let's introduce yourself. Yes, I'm Jim Johnson. I am the project manager and line editor for the Star Trek Adventures game published by Modifius Entertainment. Right. This is what we do. And so now what we've been doing, we are in chapter six of the player's guide. These were released in fourth quarter 2021, the game master's guide and the player's guide. Um, I have to say they're getting rave reviews when I read people's comments online, uh, Jim. One, the other day I was sitting there and I'm just going through Facebook and uh, my wife's sitting across from me and I went, wow. And, and a very experienced player made a comment that at first they were like, I'm not gonna buy this. I don't need to add the core rule book, but for some reason they bought it. And they were like, wow, I'm so glad I bought the Game Master's Guide. And I'm not saying that to pump the book up, of course, you know, or to, or to sell mm -hmm. copies, but what they were saying in the conversation was that it wasn't only helping their uh, current Star Trek game, they actually like the insights it gave to actual game masters to make a more inclusive space for mm. more people to play the game. And so that's kind of cool. And that's why we, we've been reviewing the Game Master's Guide and now the Player's Guide. What's your insight been on that? What have you been hearing? <clears throat> I, I am uh, I am I am daily I don't know what the word is chuffed I guess <laughs> that I uh, gratified at, at how well this is this book has been re been received and you know, again I'm not here to pump it up I you know the, I've done the work it's out of my mind for the most part like uh, I just I have a short term memory so I, I, I you know I, I compartmentalize and move on to the next project the next twenty projects on my plate right now it's ridiculous. Oh. Uh, but like I, I am so gratified that the fans are receiving these these two books so well and I think the, the my favorite comment is still the one. And I know this this is kind of like a weird kind of backhanded compliment, but like someone said, the, the player's guide and game master guide are so good, especially if you're not playing Star Trek Adventures. Like if you're playing a Star Trek RPG, but you're not using the Star Trek Adventures game line, these books are still useful because there's so much good information in there about the franchise, about the basics of the setting and about like how just to be a good player and a good game master in a Trek mindset, right? So like the first five chapters, you could almost lift those five chapters out and drop them into any other format of game that you're playing, as long as you're playing Star Trek or some form of Star Trek. And I, and I did, it didn't occur to me that that we could that we could do that, right? When I when we were writing these books and putting these books together, I was aiming at new Star Trek Adventures fans, new Star Trek fans, and existing Star Trek Adventures players. It didn't occur to me that these would be beneficial to non STA players. Although I guess I should have I should have known, <laughs> but I didn't, right? Because I wasn't thinking about that at the time. But uh, so yeah, just that's the coolest comment. It's like, oh yeah, there's a there's some crossover appeal now, and that's really exciting because uh, you know I do have to wear that project manager hat, and if, if I can find ways to make our products appeal uh, appealable appealing to <laughs> non the the non core SCA group, then that's just a win too because that means we're gonna sell more copies and get more more people looking at the game. Well, speaking of non-core, this is the perfect segue. I don't know how you do it, Jim, every time and give me a perfect segue <laughs> into what we're talking about. It's madness. But the, <laughs> we're talking today um, in chapter six about character creation options. Mm -hmm. and 
when it came to Star Trek, for many times, people think of the core crew that is on the bridge yeah. and these characters, and that's who the show focuses on. But then we have like Deep Space Nine come out. And mm-hmm. Deep Space Nine all of a sudden made a, a clothiers, a, 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 a tailor, one of the most provocative characters. And, and it made a Ferengi bartender and his brother and nephew, uh, you know, some of the most provocative characters you've ever seen. And mm-hmm. so this chapter was such a boon. And I've heard so much about it. When we did our session zero with Scott Pearson, who is the the editor for Star Trek, Shyman and Schuster Star Trek line, um, he he also had that epiphany. Like, wait a second, I can I can play a civilian scientist. I can play, you know, like this ca- chapter has been waking people up to the potential of Star Trek. So, talk to me about why you included it in here. Why it's one of your uh, uh, if it's one of your favorite chapters. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I, it's funny you say that. This is this is literally the favorite chapter between the Player's Guide and the Game Master Guide. This is it. This is my favorite chapter of all of them. This this one chapter in the player's guide. And and the reason, because as as program manager, but also as a Star Trek gamer, this is the chapter that I hope will really like just blow the the doors off of Star Trek Adventures and, and make it more even more appealing to a broader game, you know, set of people who are either casual fans or don't know the series or whatever. Because because now we can we were pro, we're providing you options and rules to play all those non starfleet characters in fact the first chapter heading in the chapter is beyond starfleet right so now the 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 mot the barber the guinan the the cork the neelix the kest the uh, i mean just all the non starfleet character main characters that you see on the shows all the different shows uh even like prodigy all the kids from prodigy um all the all the misfits and former starfleet officers on picard Right, Doctor Gerardi, um, you know Seven, Lux, Luxana Troy, Luxana Troy, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, Doctor Ira Graves, you know, all the supporting, all the all the guest stars that were on D- Next Gen and DS9, all these characters that had such huge moments or roles in the show, you can now play those if you want to. Right, I mean, this uh, I just love this chapter because there's just so many new options. Yeah. You don't have to just play a Starfleet game or just a Klingon game anymore. You can play uh, just literally anything and. I, I know these books are just really starting to hit the shelves now in the United States. And of course they're out in Europe and UK and everything. And, and the PDFs are available everywhere, of course. Right. But like, but I want to see what people do with this, with all these different roles and options now to really just expand the game, even beyond what we've been seeing for the last four and a half years, which, you know, for the most part, watching YouTube and Twitch, the vast majority of the games I've seen are either Klingon crews doing, doing their thing or Starfleet crews doing their thing. I haven't seen a lot of non Starfleet characters. I may just not be looking in the right places, uh, but I haven't a lot of I haven't seen a lot of non Starfleet characters in a Starfleet you know focused show or whatever. Well, and so just I'm just to, excited to see what happens. Well, to let you know, I think Al Sp- Spader wrote a lot of this, right? The Al Spader. Uh, this was a this was a team effort. I think a little bit of everybody's in here. A bit of everybody, because <laughs> yeah. one of the things that it changed in our game, and just give an example how people can use this. One, we introduced um, a character who was a, a scientist specialist, um, but dealing from not even on their ship working the angle from far away, kind of like Reginald Barkley did for Voyager Mm -hmm. and trying to bring them home. But it also inspired one of our characters to have a child Mm -hmm. and and to now make that child part of the crew based off of this chapter. And I already mentioned in a previous um, in our previous show that a ship's cook and and really expounding on that character, what they do and how they can save the world sometimes, too. So um, this was inspiring a lot of examples with characters that you already mentioned in the chapter and then when we go into chapter 6.2 it goes into new character roles and it starts listing them there i don't i know we're not going to list them all but why don't you tell me maybe your one or two favorite that that you hope to see people you know start playing or you want to play yeah uh, before i do that just real quick now now that i'm f- flipping through this chapter and re- refreshing my memory because this, this this stuff was written a year ago if you can believe it it's been a year <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Nathan, Nathan Dowdell, who wrote a, a huge chunk, like, like the vast majority of the core rule book, um, was gracious enough with his time and talent to provide a lot of this as well, uh, because he's been working on other 2D20 versions of the game for Dune and for um, other, uh, you know, John Carter and other properties. And so he's just got a wealth of new ideas and insights. And plus, he's got a, he's a huge Star Trek buff as well. So he knows Star Trek really, really well. 
And so he wrote a large chunk of this section here with all these new roles and options for player characters. So I want to make sure that Nathan gets Thank all you. the kudos that he deserves because he is, he is, he like, if there was a, a pumping heart in this entire, in, the, <laughs> in this entire 2D20 game, it's his. Uh, yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Nathan, for all this stuff. And uh, if, now, if, if anyone's never met him, by the way, I always say go to a social media and ask a question about this game and he's likely to respond. He's one of the most absolutely uh, accessible, responsive people I've ever yeah. met. He's so great. Yeah. yeah. And he, and you will get a, a comprehensive answer to whatever yeah. question you have. And he's fantastic for that. I'm so great. And that's why I tapped him for this because like yeah. all that wealth of knowledge in his head is like, we got to get that on paper somewhere. So people aren't going to 10 different message boards trying to find your insights. Let's get this all into a book <laughs> somehow. Thank you. Uh, cool. So anyway, uh, so the, uh, there's like, I think there's 12 or 14 new roles in here uh, beyond what's already uh, that we covered last time. Um, the ones that I think I'm most excited about, gosh, there's so many. Um, Pick one or two. Okay. Uh, off. Ambassador, because that's just a great potential for interaction with the captain and the, and the senior crew, especially if you're a civilian, because you're outside of the chain of command and that can create all kinds of little wiggly uh, RP moments. Uh, child, of course, is a huge extensive uh, insights in here about playing a child, uh, which yeah. I think is just, I mean, having just watched the first season, uh, the first half of the first season of Prodigy, it's like, oh, yeah, there's some RP potential there. Um, and then expert, I think expert just has a huge variety of options that you can do and get involved with and be a non Starfleet character and, and still be the expert of something, yeah. you know, so I'm really excited about that. I'm going to go with the two that I like the most because they are characters that we play now in the game. I love administrator. So I love ending up at this alien space station colony and you have that person who's in charge and you have to work through them to get anything done. You can't yeah. just storm onto it. You have to work with this person. They're, they're considerate of all these political and bureaucratic things. So the administrators, I really try to make them very interesting characters. Mm -hmm. Kind of think about all the bosses and CEOs we see out there. I try to pick sure. personalities from them and emulate that. So if all of a sudden you ended up on Martha Stewart's space station, what would that look <laughs> like? You know? And so I, uh -huh. I, I do that. And then I'm in agreement with you about expert. Um, I think it's more invigorating in a Star Trek story and it's proven by the TV shows that you could have the character solve a scientific problem, but having them have to deal with an expert, especially if that expert has a horrible personality mm. and they're the expert on it. I think about uh, Dr. Laura Brahms and, and uh, Jordi LaForge had to work with her. She was the designer of the warp engine on the Star Trek. Did I get the name right, Brahms? Uh, Leah Brahms. Leah Brahms. Leah and Brahms, he yeah. had dreamed her up in his mind one way because of the holodeck program. And now he had to deal with her in real life. And yeah. it's like, oh. Very, very awkward. <laughs> love, love that. And so I have experts in ours too that, mm. you know, they're so brilliant. They're actually socially inept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I think that creates some interesting dynamics with the characters. They don't want to have to work with them. But over time, they start understanding them. And so yeah. those that was one where I, I employ expert a lot in my game. Mm -hmm. yeah. nice. uh, last one I'll point out, and just because we're talking about it, I think I think uh, I love the fact that Nathan dropped in spiritual leader here. I think that's a that's a, a, an aspect of the franchise that DS9 explored really, really well. And I just I love the idea. Like I haven't had an opportunity to run this yet, but I love the idea of running a campaign or at least part of a campaign where the crew goes into a new region of space and and their their like you know guide for that section of the space is a spiritual leader. And then you can bring that whole faith element into the game and, and kind of like have the skeptics on one hand and the faith on the other. And you can just have those really interesting conversations that uh, Kira led and, you know, Kira and Worf and a couple others led on DS9 and just really, you know, explore that aspect of humanity that uh, um, yeah. I know Roddenberry tried to kind of like, you know, push to the side, but it, you know, it's, it's present. And uh, I think we, uh, it's, there's value there. Yeah. We actually did it three seasons in my game. We brought a character in after the first season whose entire galactic empire had fallen and mm -hmm. she was considered a, a high priestess nice. and, but her gods had fallen. And so then they start encountering things that are reminiscent of her fallen deities as they start traveling through this unknown portion of space. Oh, nice. And it created some great com uh, commentaries. We yeah. matched it with the strange new worlds book because they had so many stories with these epic powers in there mm. that it was like oh that's proof that i'm right oh well that's proof that the, you know and it created a lot of philosophical discussions among our group which was really fun yeah so that's the kind of stuff i would totally eat that up because as a, as a game master and a player i love digging into mythology and finding stories to tell and just weave them into this in the story i i would yeah i'd totally eat that stuff up so yeah. good, and, good on you man 
<laughs> and spoiler, the ending of the season was she had to defeat her own god in battle. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Which was really fun. Talk really about fun. a character arc though, right? It was great. It took it took uh 20 episodes. Wait, one, two. No, it took 13 episodes. No, it took almost 20 episodes to get through that arc. Wow. And she developed it and she went from being an ambassador to the crew helping them get through that portion of space to actually uh joining Starfleet by the end of it and defeating and, and did her. their did their values change over the course oh. of the uh Huge. She, and her ego yeah. matches being a deity, but you know, being a high priest, <laughs> like, like, and she's an ensign because she's starting out in Starfleet now. And so that's the funny battle is, is I was once a goddess or, or training to be a goddess and leader mm-hmm. of my people. And now I'm an ensign on a Starfleet vessel. So it's quite interesting. <laughs> and so, yeah, this game has endless possibilities, which is a perfect segue about alternative life paths. Chapter six, what's this chapter about? Yeah, so if you're familiar with the core book, core rule book, or this, or the Klingon core rule book, you'll know that uh, of course Star Trek Adventures uses a life path, ideally to create your character. So you go step by step through their their uh, their beginning, their upbringing, their home home world, uh, on into their career, et cetera. And you just go step by step building the character, values, focuses, et cetera. And uh, this chapter just provides you some 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 different choices. So if you if you're not you know Starfleet and you're not Klingon, you want to do something different, hit this one because this this takes you through the same steps of the life path. It just gives you more options, more different things to do uh, and to and to pick from. Can I ask, I think I've seen it asked on the message board somewhere, are these going to be integrated into the online uh, gener- character generator? Yeah, eventually. Yeah, we talked to the, the, the person who's uh, administering the, uh, the third party uh, builder now. Um, I asked them to hold off on putting this stuff in until the actual books came out because, um, you know, partly just, you know, out of you know, pure necessity, we wanted to encourage people to go buy the books, right? And not just rely on the character generator. Um, okay. But yeah, once once the books are out there in regular circulation, especially in the United States, um, all this stuff will get added as as the developer has time. Like they're doing this for the love. This isn't uh, they're not getting paid to do this. Although we do try to you know help them out. But um, um, this is you know as as they have time and availability. But they've been really good about as BC Homes. Uh, she does a great job. Uh, uh, she tends Can we to give get, her a huge shout out because I'm telling her right now. That 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 generator has become a religion to people. I mean, we have so much fun playing with that generator, BC Homes. So thank you so much for that. Thank, thank yeah, you. thank yeah. you very much. Um, and so yeah, so all this stuff will get incorporated into that builder somehow. Like I don't know all the details, and I certainly wasn't thinking about the character builder when we were writing this and when I was editing it. But you know, now that I'm looking at, it, I'm like, oh shoot, how are you going to make all these options available in that character generator? But I'm I'm confident she'll find a way. So or or they I'm not exactly sure on their pronouns. So I apologize, BC, if I'm getting it wrong. Let me know. And I'll get it right next time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. I, one very, 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 very helpful tool is on page 199, the rank comparisons. Um, I think this really helps me with the language when I'm building working with the different um uh species in star trek and i think Mm -hmm. it's also good if people have species that are not listed here just go ahead and add your own personal note addendum to this and kind of think about if you make up an alien race and maybe uh their their culture has different terms than commander maybe they call themselves ragdoos or something you know go ahead and use this as a basis to create a comparison chart for your player so that they know who they should be talking to at any given moment so i thought this was a really good helpful chart here yeah, this was this was really challenging to put together because there are uh, canon, of course, doesn't have all this information, and so we had to kind of rely on secondary canon and and just like guesswork for some of this stuff. Uh, fortunately, CBS you know gave, gave it a pass and didn't have any problems with it. Uh, so, but but you know, honestly, if you're if you're a stickler for details, you know, you know, players and game masters out there, take this table with a grain of salt because we did the best we could <laughs> and right. and like we we're pretty sure it's relatively accurate at least as far as canon goes but uh um it, it should do the job even if it may not necessarily hold up under real tight scrutiny yeah, the so much- cra- yeah the one that cracks me up is the Andor- andorian imperial guard of the 22nd century it's like there's really not a lot of chance for promotion <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> matches yeah. the andorians i love it <laughs> yeah so it, it, it's tricky but uh, you know this is the kind of stuff that's important to gamers that yeah. um, you know the producers of the TV show don't always think about, right? And that's where we have to kind of like fill in the gaps as RPG developers and writers, and to try to make it all make some sort of sense, you yeah. know. So, 
Good. So then going on, um, a, a couple of highlights that I'll have, and then I'll let you wrap up the chapter for us. Yeah. You know, again, it talks about, you know, civilian characters, which again, super fun. I love having civilian characters on our game. There's a box on vigilantes. And then, um, uh, you know, cadets, there's some inf information on cadets, which I think are important, especially if you have NPC cadets on a, on a crew, it makes some great uh, lower deck episodes. Yep. Uh, for those who are playing lower decks, you may want to take a look at the cadet section. Um, mm -hmm. What else were your highlights for this chapter? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, like I said, first of all, just just the the new wealth of options that are here to to make your, your, your background even more diverse and interesting uh, outside of what's already in the core books. Uh, more options for cadet characters. So like if you wanted to do a Starfleet Academy campaign or you wanted to do a lower decks kind of campaign where your your recruits maybe or your cadets maybe you're on your um, on your like your six month tour of duty before you graduate and you're getting some field experience, this is an opportunity uh, to do something there. And then uh, children, I think uh, you know prodigy is is uh, being super well received out there in the world right now after its uh, first 10 episode run. And uh, there's an opportunity here to uh, to play kids in, on the show. So like whether you're the child of one of the other player characters or you are a crew of alien characters who stumble upon a Starfleet ship with a Janeway you know, hologram and you want to go off and go on adventures, you can do it. Uh, we can make it work. Uh, so there's just a, or if you're, um, and I just blanked on, I blanked on the character's name. What's the, What's the child they rescued in Voyager that became an important character later in the series? Na Naomi Wildman. Yes. Or oh, Echeb. Or Echeb. Or either one. Yeah, yeah. There's all. Yeah. Naomi Wildman or Echeb. All. Yeah. Them. So if you want to do that kind of angle and be a child on the on the show with the rest of the crew, you can you can do it. So I, I just love the fact that Nathan dropped it in here because uh, we wanted to make sure that that option was available, right? Because because uh, children, especially in next gen. And uh, gosh, especially DS9, right? I mean, this is an opportunity if you want to play a Jake kind of character right. and have that kind of relationship with uh, with another player character, you can do it. That was great. Uh, yeah, we saw Nog grow up on the show. Which was and great. Nog, yeah, of course. Yeah, cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Again, a great chapter. It's your favorite chapter in, out of both players and Game Master's Guide. Again, uh, the more... for. For us creative people, the more we read this chapter, the more frustrated we get that we can't play Star Trek Adventures all day long. So <laughs> be prepared for that torture. Um, I yeah. want to do the uh, shout outs as usual. We always give a shout out to a game shop. Now, this one is a very special <laughs> one because I'm going to be shouting out uh, Dwayne's World in Kingsport, Tennessee. But what's so cool about this, it's the person who did the shout out. So of course, yeah, we love the brick and mortar, Dwayne's World in Kingsport, Tennessee. But Johnny Karzai... That's his favorite brick and mortar. And if you don't know who that is, uh, he's a director producer for fan made Star Trek films. And he's actually going to be coming out with one called Farragut. It's, it's another one that's coming out uh, soon. And he's going to be, um, uh, you know, showing a fan made film. So he'll get another ultimate fan of Star Trek where they can't get enough of it. So they just start making their own movies. Um, so I love, I love his, his backstory on that. What about you, Jim? Any shout outs this week? Uh, shout outs this week. Um, can't ever say enough about the fans of the, of the, of the, uh, of the game. I think now that we have the official discord open, um, I spend a lot of time on social media for this game, of course, but like consistently, whether it's the subreddit or the official forums or the Facebook group or the, now the discord, like there are just so many fans out there so willing to give their time and talent to help new players understand the rules, understand the series, understand the franchises, come up with ideas. Like if somebody needs ideas for a plot or an episode or something um i just want to say thank you to the fans like I, I knew the trek family was pretty pretty tight anyway right uh and i'm just i'm seeing it every day with star trek adventures and uh it, it's just gratifying to see this game just kind of take a life of its own and the players taking care of each other right that's just it's great sure. to see keeps continuing missions alive too which is wonderful a lot, a lot of mm -hmm. cool stuff on that so everyone just remember meet me over here <laughs> where the part this is where the after party is somewhere uh -huh. in the amber sector i think that's the amber sector <laughs> is what i've decided in my in my game the amber sector all right good to see you again jim id oh, oh my sign language idic peace out live long and prosper see you next time